Um, just the pharmacogenomics of, of ADHD. And uh, I want, uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. So uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder affects approximately 8 to 12% of school-aged children. Uh, it's uh, depicted or presents as a childhood onset of hyperactivity and or inattention that affects uh, functioning and development. Uh, we can see um, just over time um, that uh, in 1902, uh, the, um, Sir George Still was the first person to describe ADHD, and we have progressed, uh, you know, from the early 1900s um, uh, till now um, into to DSM-5. So this is uh, something that has been um, long, uh, um, long. Uh, long identified, but uh, has not really been um, uh, as, as well understood or treated. Um, we can see uh, in the 1950s, um, we had uh, Ritalin uh, developed uh, to, to treat it, um, Adderall uh, in the 1990s, and uh, uh, in the, the 2000s, 2010s, we started using um, some uh, blood pressure medications uh, to, to as adjuncts for um, treating ADHD. Um, we do have a question about uh, the newest agent, uh, um, uh, veloxazine, that Dr. Patsnick is going to cover in her presentation. So ADHD, according to DSM-5, is a persistent pattern of inattention or hyperactivity, impulsivity uh, that interferes with uh, functioning or development. Um, it's composed of, of inattention, inability to focus, uh, plus or minus um, a hyperactivity or impulsivity, inability to um, to uh, get uh, to to maintain focus on uh, on an activity and and get up and expend energy. Um, um, so uh, there's uh, clear of it. The, the, there has to be clear evidence that uh, these symptoms interfere with or reduce the quality of social, academic, or occupational functioning. Um, and uh, the, these symptoms cannot occur um, during the course of schizophrenia or another psychotic disorder and uh, cannot be better explained by another mental disorder. Um, the exact ideology is unknown. Um, it's uh, likely an interaction of uh, genetics and environmental risks, so nature vers vers versus nurture. And uh, in the world of pharmaco. Uh, genomics, as we look at how genetics fits into our medication therapy, we know that response to drug therapy is, is multifactorial. So it's, it's just as likely that development of, of many disease states are also um, genetics are a component, but um, environmental uh, risks may play a, uh, play a, play a role in it. Um, between 40 and 90% estimated inheritability, and then, um, like I said, environmental associations. Um, we've identified dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin receptors all uh, to be associated with the development of ADHD um, according to genome and candidate, uh, candidate gene studies. Um, looking at uh, the just uh, a graphic of uh, a couple of neurons, um, the uh, pathophysiology, um, norepinephrine is associated uh, more with executive functioning. So some of the uh, medications that we use um, address uh, the norepinephrine pathway, um, drugs like adamoxetine, a non-stimulant um, uh, non stimulant ADHD medication, and then uh, dopamine, uh, which is needed for maintaining attention and uh, methylphenidate and uh, um, amphetamine, the other, the stimulant medications um, focus a lot on the uh, dopamine pathway. Um, the, the, uh, our treatment use, uh, medication use um, um, by younger boys, um, four to eight and preteens, um, uh, really dominates the C, uh, the the CNS meds that are dispensed uh, for you know for these patients. So ADHD, um, anxiety, and depression. Um, also, it's uh, most uh, the the most predominant uh, med class uh, for teenagers. And uh, the Institute for Safe Medication Practices has highlighted um, psychiatric side effects um, as prominent in the in 
top in uh, 10 of the top 15 medications uh, uh, associated with or treat, used to treat ADHD. If we look at the um, AAP uh, treatment guidelines, um, ADHD uh, should be approached as a, as a chronic condition, um, not a, not a one-time um, uh, uh, treatment. Preschool age children should receive behavioral therapy alone. Um, older children, six to 11, behavioral therapy combined with medication, um, either uh, stimulant medications, um, as I mentioned, methylphenidate or the amphetamine salts. Um, Non-stimulant medications include adamoxetine, guanfacine, clonidine, and uh, newer agent veloxazine that we will talk about uh, a little bit later. Um, adolescents um, should uh, also receive medication with uh, behavioral therapy. Uh, this, th this is just a guideline uh, uh, put out by the CD CDC that uh, describes ADHD treatments for preschoolers, again, um, mainly behavioral therapy first, and then older children, um, behavior and medication therapy. Um, looking at prescription trends, um, we can see that methylphenidate compounds have been uh, kind of at the top of the list for um, for since uh, the beginning of 2000, at the beginning of 2000 for uh, treatment of uh, of, of ADHD, um, followed uh, a little bit lower by uh, the amphetamine salts. Um, we can see um, just in 2002 when adamoxetine was uh, released to the market, um, a big increase of it, and then um, a tapering off and uh, really uh, not as much use. It's considered a second line agent due to the perception that it is uh, not as effective. Um, there's some other agents here that um, have been uh, are derivatives of some of the other uh, medications above, uh, the, especially the amphetamine uh, derivatives um, that have a, a little bit lower incidence or use. When talking about uh, the pharmacogenomics then of uh, ADHD, there are um, the certain certain labs have promoted um, their ADHD panels uh, to help guide treatment for um, pharmacogenomics. And uh, in this uh, uh, instance, I'm going to review some of uh, some of those genes um, uh, that uh, have have been promoted, but um, probably are not as useful uh, yet, at least for uh, for treatment. Um, Farm GKB has an extensive list of ADHD medications um, with genetic, uh, genetic variants associated with uh, response or outcome. All, all of the medications in this list are um, associated with methylphenidate. The ones highlighted in blue are the um, are medications uh, or genes that are um, associated only with uh, the amphetamine salts. And then um, the uh, dopamine receptors one and two have uh, some evidence with uh, both amphetamine and methylphenidate. I'm going to uh, just focus on um, three of the, the genes with uh, maybe some of the highest uh, level of evidence, if we can uh, call it uh, that, and uh, the ones that are included on many of the the, the ADHD panels that have been available. Uh, the first one um, is ADHD and uh, catechol O-methyl transferase or COMT. Um, this has a farm GKB level of evidence of three, so um, not actionable um, uh, by yet of any means. Um, the uh, main polymorphism is the uh, val uh, valine methionine or valmet polymorphism uh, with uh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, homozygous homozygous uh, valine or homozygous methionine, and then uh, heterozygous valmet. And uh, three different articles um, point in different directions um, for uh, the impact on the response to, uh, in this case, uh, methylphenidate. Um, Sengupta and colleagues um, found that the uh, valmet polymorphism does not modulate response with methylphenidate. Uh, likewise, uh, similarly, Contini um, and colleagues also um, demonstrated no significant effect of this uh, variant um, in response to methophenidate. 
Um, a little bit more recent study, McCracken um, uh, Pharmacogenomics, um, met carriers had uh, improved hyperactivity response um, there. And uh, apologies for the uh, um, projection issues. Um, this uh, showed up fine on my screen before I uh, put it in presenter mode. <laughs> Um, the second gene that is looked at is the uh, adrenergic alpha-2 uh, receptor, and uh, the uh, farm, again, the uh, farm GKB level of evidence is uh, level three. Uh, the most studied polymorphism is uh, the RS1800544. Um, it's a, a variant in the promoter region. Um, and uh, again, we have uh, different, uh, different directions of uh, Action ability or different directions of action with the uh, with this uh, polymorphism. Um, in this case, carriers of the G allele demonstrated greater improvement um, during the first month of therapy, um, with uh, less difference after three months uh, between uh, the groups with these polymorphisms. And then Hegvik um, and colleagues, carriers of the uh, G allele demonstrated decreased response to methylphenidate during the initial analysis. Um, some of the uh, differences or things that have been highlighted to these differential response is um, potentially uh, children versus adults may have different responses uh, with respect to this receptor. Um, there are also uh, potential differences in response between um, uh, single diagnosis of ADHD and then autism spectrum disorder with ADHD-like symptoms uh, a along with it. And so we uh, may not expect the same response. So these, this has been uh, clouding some of the, the research that we've seen for um, ADHD. And uh, these differences um, really uh, lose, lose their significance um, on repeat analysis and uh, meta-analysis. Meta so um, ADHD um, or a ADRA2A is um, not really actionable at this moment either, um, despite it being on com commercial panels for ADHD. And then the final uh, gene, the dopamine uh, receptor, DRD1 uh, and 2, um, Florence, and, and colleagues in 2013 um, had a group of 90 patients um, that they examined in the DRD1, um, the uh, uh, variant RS, um, RS4532. Um, patients with the CC genotype in this were associated with uh, greater risk of toxicity, um, social withdrawal, and nausea with both um, methylphenidate and uh, dexamphetamine. Um, the nausea with dexamphetamine was um, uh, even uh, was, was worse um, with the uh, CC uh, genotype uh, in particular. And then um, uh, another group, uh, Pegarols, um, in uh, 2017, um, looked at uh, DRD2, um, RS2283265. Um, they had uh, a similar sized cohort of patients, 107 pediatric patients, and they um, identified that heterozygotes for the AC and then homozygous AA genotypes were associated with a greater incidence of side effects um, compared to CC uh, uh, homozygote with, uh, with methylphenidate. Um, these are the uh, only two studies listed on the uh, Farm, Farm GKB website for each of these uh, variants. And uh, so again, not enough interest to really make this clinically actionable, um, but certainly uh, of interest potential for more, um, more research hypothesis generating sorts of things. 